go ahead and take you through my new workflow, Project Schema. You just flow Project Schema. It is a template-based workflow a system uh, that allows you to build your own workflows uh, from a series of components that I've made, as well as uh, allowing you to create your own workflows, your own template-based workflows that you can wire up and uh, use within the system. Secondly, it makes extensive use of UE nodes, the uh, Use Everywhere nodes from Chris Gorringe, and they are uh, phenomenal, uh, quite frankly. So I would advise you to go and check out his stuff, because they really made this whole thing possible. When I saw what these could do, the Blender slash Unreal Engine style one-to-many connections that they can make, that's when I realized, oh, we can modularize our workflows uh, now, truly modularize them. So with that, let's go ahead and build a workflow really fast so you can see how it works. I've already started Comfy UI, and I'm starting off from a blank uh, slate. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click, go to Node Templates, and I'm going to find, uh, put in some commons, add those to a group, make them easy to work with. These are just a series of uh, literals and common elements that we use throughout the workflow. Go down here, I'm going to right click, node templates, and we're going to go ahead and put in a loader. We will link those. Right-click again, Node Templates, I'm going to bring in a sampler, and we will uh, put those in a group. And at this point, that is all we have to do. Uh, right now, uh, we are using uh, this specific uh, latent, or, or rather the control net latent, that's this. Um, however, we um, don't have a control net right now. That's what this box is here for. It's there to provide a latent in the case that you don't want to wire up a control net. Here you can choose um, your latent size. You can also use the common latent if you want by setting this switch to one. Uh, let's go over here and we have a similar situation happening with the seed. There is a common seed uh, which is at pool zero or pool one use new seed. We're going to use the new seed in this case just to, so that it's easier uh, to work with. Um, and we will assign ourselves a new fixed random here so that we get a different image. This is obviously from a control net, so the image we're going to get uh, this time around um, is a one-to-one -one image. So let's go ahead and click Q prompt. And it is creating portrait of a girl, you know, young uh, Swedish woman. Okay, there we go. Um, from here we can add in a saver node, node templates, saver, encapsulate it, like so. And at this point, what we select here is what we will get here. Previously I had selected color palette, so it had done a bunch of colors from a previous image. Let's click Q prompt. Now we have a nice line art image, and it's going ahead and saving that out for us. How are these linked? They are linked by an invisible wire. In fact, go ahead and go to our 30,000 foot view, maybe not quite 30,000, let's go to 15,000 and show our links, you can see what's happening. The sacred timeline is keeping everything in its place. Thank you, Victor Timely. All right, uh, we could um, add in a second sampler here, which let's go ahead and do that. And this second sampler needs to generate its own image name so that things are targeted properly, All right? And let's group those together. 
this is like sampler two, right? This can live next to it, can live anywhere it wants to, because again, once we show our links, it's all getting wired up on its own. We don't have to do any of that work um, because I've already done all that work, so you don't have to. So there you go. Uh, that's a second sampler, and we could, you know, generate another saver. We're not going to bother here, but we could generate another saver and set the target of that saver up here to sampler two. Right. And now if we come over here and we do a new random here and we generate or we do Q prompt, it's going to now run this sampler with its own seed. And in a second, we'll have our image over here because we have changed our sampler target. Right? We can have one sampler, 10 samplers, 100 samplers, and 100 savers, it doesn't matter. It'll all wire up on its own, right? Let's go ahead and get rid of um, sampler two. We'll get rid of its group. Great. And then we're going to change the name of our saver target back to gen image. That name could be anything, by the way. Generated image, gen image is just what I chose, but anything that matches uh, will get routed to this node. This node, by the way, is um, a node that I created uh, in Visual Studio uh, based on a Wasquatch node, um, image batch node, I think, uh, is what I use to kind of hack apart. I am not a programmer, uh, but it does work. So uh, there are three nodes uh, that this workflow requires. One of them is the image uh, uh, passer. The other is a latent passer uh, that isn't necessary now, but may will well be soon. And then the third is a node that allows us to do control net pre-process choosing um, without all of the extra nodes that I had to use for the original Aegis flow to get around things when I wasn't rolling my own component. Those obviously will come with the workflow, so not a big worry there. Uh, anyway, so that is the basic operation, right? This is a, a pretty simple setup that has a nice loader with a bunch of options, has a nice sampler with a bunch of options, a nice saver with a bunch of options, and a whole bunch of common elements that do things like define you know, what your folder name is that you're saving to and what the project name is and that sort of thing. And up here, you can turn on the um, unique identifier additional um, piece that can get attributed to the end of, uh, or concatenated to the end of file names uh, to keep everything nice and uh, unique. Um, let's really quick show you control net, and then we're going to set up an iterate node, which is uh, Aegis Flow Iterate, or uh, it is a uh, iterative upscaler node. Um, or node group. I don't really quite know what to call these. They're not really nodes. Module, I guess. Um, anyway, I'm going to come way out here. I'm going to say add a node template, and I have a control net comprehensive. When this loads up, it tells you how to use, place all three sections in their own group, then delete the note, and then also be sure to delete your loader's red, big red latent box uh, so that this wires up in its place, and that will happen. This box here is effectively holding the place for when you get your control net in place, and that's so you can use your own images, like this one, to generate new content, right? Reimagine your own art, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to control, drag, add a group, control, drag, add a group, drag add a group and at this point these can go wherever the hell I want because I don't have to have them nearby and I don't have to worry about a billion wires streaming across because when you have all this wired up it starts to look pretty crazy 
Can you imagine the amount of time it would take you to do all of this wiring, personally? Um, I can tell you, it takes many, 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 many hours. Far more hours than I probably should have spent, but it's pretty cool, so I'm glad that I did. Um, anyway, let's hide those airplanes between the islands. Shima, by the way, is Japanese for island, which is why I called it Project Shima, because all of these are sort of like little islands in the stream, and they can go anywhere, and they don't muck things up, and you don't have a bunch of noodles, but you can still see the noodles within the group so that you can follow the group's logic, and then the magic lines happen, the connections between the islands, and that's that modularity that the UE nodes are bringing to Comfy. Um, without that, um, this would not have been possible. So, Chris, uh, you're the man, uh, I assume. Uh, actually, I guess sometimes Chris is a woman, right? Christina. But uh, in any case, uh, that is um, how the control nets get set up initially. Then we go and we delete this box, right? We make sure that we are on the control net latent, number two, here, right? Over here, in our control net stack, switch three is on by default, and it is using this by default with the normal line art choice, right? Here on the input. If we switch this, we can go to different kinds of uh, processors, right? Um, sorry. Sorry about that bobble. Uh, it was just a browser problem. Anyway, we could select here, and bam. I just had to refresh my screen. I don't know what Chrome was thinking, but in any case, there we go. So um, if we push uh, Q prompt again, we should, if we've made all our settings correct, and I think we have, um, get a processed image from here in the line art fashion and it'll get sent over automatically to the control net stack and eventually start making us an image here which it is let's see what it gives us all right Lady on Tokyo Street, something similar. Uh, let's go ahead and add in an iterative upscaler to fi finish us off, uh, to make this image a little bit nicer, or hopefully. So we're going to right click and choose iterate, and we're going to group it all, right? And it's using gen image as well, right? So the same in image that comes out of here is going into the saver, and it's also going into here. That means that we'd need to make another saver that specifically targeted this node, or we can simply drag it out, right? Save image. Not everything has to be super complicated, right? So make it as complex as it has to be and no more in order to achieve your goal, right? That's the goal. So now when we click on U prompt. By the way, this switch is a, a resizer. It basically rescales uh, typically down. And the reason you'd want to do that is because um, you might have uh, not enough VRAM uh, to do calculations on a really large upscaled image. So, and I explained that, and I try to do that in Aegis Flow in general with helpful notes in context when you see things that are a little bit like, hey, I wonder what that does. In this case, though, we didn't generate a huge image, so we don't really need it. Click Q prompt. It's going to load in. And we're going to go ahead and do our iterative upscale. Right now, we're using an upscale factor of just 1.2, because um, mostly I'm looking for to see it fix the image a little. And we're just doing three steps. And it will be done in just a moment. This is its final. Three of three. And voila. So it's interesting. Iterative upscale sometimes makes things better, but also sometimes makes them a little worse. 
So you kind of want to be able to keep different pieces of your image around so that you can go and composite them yourself. Obviously her jacket's a little better. Um, the belt is obviously quite a bit better. Some of the anatomy is, is overall better. She's no longer saran wrapped to death around this leg, which is kind of nice. But her hand, I don't know, maybe the Yakuza broke it or something. I don't know what's going on there. But in any case, um, that is a really quick example of how fast you can build really complex workflows or how fast you can make just a really simple workflow. And of course, again, you can always drag these things out and do anything else that you want to do, right? So, you know, upscale the image, blah, 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 to a new size. It's, you know, you could throw this into your own upscaler. You could throw it into your own workflow that you bring in, you know, cut and paste a bunch of nodes in and then wire it up manually. Um, or you can use the senders, right, to send things around. Uh, if you want to learn how to use UE, uh, I highly recommend downloading it and giving it a shot um, and see how you like it. Um, in any case, um, that is the workflow. We obviously have quite a bit of other nodes, or a couple of other nodes at least. Um, we have, for instance, um, an FX pipe here. And this FX pipe can be used to create um, special effects. It also takes in your, um, your image, right? From down here. And let's actually do that. Uh, let's do this. Iterate image send is going to be what we're sending it to. So let's go up to our effects pipe and change our sent image to this. All right? And we're going to make sure that it's using the sent image here. And it's going to add some film grain and the color correction. Now there's no, none of these are set. So let's bump up the saturation a bit. Do it 20% more saturation. And there we go. Film grain and more saturated, right? Pretty nice. We could also, just really quickly, um, put in an image pass node, right? We'll call it gen underscore image, right? Or actually, no, we'll call it iterate image send because we want to do a comparison, right? And then we're going to drag out from that and we're just going to say preview image, right? Make it roughly the same size. There, new prompt. And now we get a nice side by side. No wires required, right? Anyway, uh, I hope that was helpful, and I really appreciate um, all the people who have helped me uh, get it to the state that it's in. Melmas, uh, you know, has been great. He's developing this uh, kind of documentation node, I guess you'd call it, um, and we're you know we're working hard on that. Um, there's also uh, you know a variety of other people. You know, Chris obviously uh, over at UE Nodes um, or you know UE. Yeah, UE nodes, there's Trung, 0246 uh, on GitHub has some really great highway nodes, and uh, you should check those out as well. Uh, just a variety of folks in the company community that's helped uh, bring this project to life. I really appreciate it, really appreciate everybody. Open Art, you guys are awesome for running this contest as well. Uh, super great, and I hope that you can uh, uh, evaluate this and see that you know it has some really special features that I think you're not going to see uh, in the rest of the competition. So uh, with that said, thank you so much for everything you guys have do done, and I will talk to you later. All right, a professional podcast host, I am obviously not. Later. <laughs>